Do we hold it? Do we hold it? Oh, I got it. You sure? It's still going. Yeah, it's just I thought it spun in and it didn't. Oh, no wonder. I forgot to put the bolt up. Will we help you? I'll be glad to come over there if you need me. Don't have to go back to the shot. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if we get away with this. I'll turn this so it doesn't allow the camera to just flop back and forth. There, I almost have a little bit of excitement. It's like I just got attacked by a vicious dog. focused on the chair again, but that's easy, because I know where it goes. Oops. This one needs to come up just the hair. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, next thing I want to do, uh, I want to go in more into detail on these, but before we do, I want to clarify a point. Uh, when we were recharging the battery, uh, I asked you about a statement that you made earlier on tape that you would not been interviewed by the FBI, never met anyone from the FBI, and never seen, uh, even seen an FBI agent. Yeah. Now, when I first interviewed you in prison here last fall, you said that you had uh, met a number of FBI agents, and I want to clarify that discrepancy. Can you explain that? Yeah, what I meant by not meeting any FBI agents, I meant involved with the Franklin, anything dealing with the Franklin case, dealing with Johnny Gosh. I'd never met anybody dealing specifically with this case. I had met FBI agents prior to being arrested and stuff with different things I was involved in stuff, but I'd never met anybody dealing with uh, Gosh or with uh, Franklin, so what not any, any related matters with uh, the Franklin case or with Johnny Gosh, so I've never met anybody with that. What you're saying is you've never had a formal interview no, I've never been with interviewed. the FBI no. since the Franklin Credit Union case broke, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's okay. okay. So I want to clarify that, because you told me in the last interview that I had with you that you had met seven or eight agents, I believe, Yeah. and I want to get into that later, okay? Now, what I want to do next is I'd like to go through... We're not through with the chart, by the way, Paul. I'd like to go through the part, the chart, starting with Mark Anderson, and explain each one of these. Why, why Mark Anderson? You, you said something earlier. Is there any further clarification of that? Because you with Mark Anderson, it was mainly dealing with the. Uh, he started when I was about. I think it was before I was six. Harold Anderson. He, you're well, talking about. he start the personality started. Okay. Before I was six and stuff as just Mark, and never had a last name. And years later, he was the person I had dealt mainly with uh, Harold Anderson, and that's where he picked up the name Anderson for his last name. What is years later? About 1978, I believe. Well, how old were you then? I was about uh, probably 11, 10, 11 years old. Okay, and uh, who was Harold Anderson? He was the ex-editor uh, of the Omaha World Herald. Publisher, I think he was. Well, yeah. He was a publisher. Yeah, he was also the editor. Was he before that? Lead. Okay, before he was published, he was an editor. Yeah, and oh. I know that happened in... I'm just double-checking. 78, yeah, because I met him in... through uh, Danny Walter Carlson. And that was at some... Who's Danny Walter Carlson? <clears throat> huh? Who's Carlson? Walter Carlson. Walter? Okay, who is that? Uh... He was one of the first guys that really started abusing me on a regular basis, and he started in about 76. I met him at Hanscom Park. Uh, my family was having some kind of family reunion or something, and he was, the guy that was there, and I was kind of off to the side and he talked to me and said, you know, 
I might like to come over and play some of his nephews or something sometime. And, uh, so I, I agreed to and stuff. And he sometimes he started. Uh, he, at first it just started off. We went over his house stuff and we watched cartoons stuff. Then it started into showing regular movies, and then he started showing movies with men and women having sex and movies of men and boys having sex and stuff. So kind of worked out. And there's other guys like a guy named uh, Ken Bruner and. Uh, Who's he? He's a guy that used to be with Carlson and stuff at parties and stuff at Carlson's house or at uh, Joe Burke's house. He was also another guy that was involved with them. And, and what, you know, what were their occupations? I have no idea what their occupations were. I never, you know, you, you I was, know I was a kid, I didn't know. Carlson's, Bruner's, or Burke's occupations? You never did know? I never knew because I was just a kid and I never, you know, they didn't volunteer any information. You haven't learned since then, have you? <laughs> okay, keep going. Uh... But they were involved with a whole group of guys who, uh, again, they were molesting other kids and they did the same thing to me. And, uh, does, that have, does that have to do with uh, Mark Anderson's personality? Those yeah, that some, had something to do with it because... Some personalities under Mark yeah, they, Anderson. A lot of the personalities were abused by those guys and stuff and along with the other personalities that are in this general area, but... Uh, it was through them that I met uh, Harold Anderson at a party and stuff, and that's when I started to meet with him. That's when you got into the big time, huh? <clears throat> no, kind of, because after that I met some other people. Who, who else did you meet through Harold Anderson and these big people? Through them I really didn't meet too many people. I met uh, a guy named uh, uh, Robert Andreessen, who was a big guy that lived out in Ralston, and uh, used to kind of be th real threatening if you told that he would approach you or something. Who is he? Uh, who's Andreessen uh, professionally? Professionally, I'm not sure what he was. All I know he's a big guy. I never, I never got to know what anybody really did for a living. The only, I, I never even knew what Harold Anderson did, except for uh, one time I was told he ran a paper. That's all I knew is that he ran a paper. I didn't even know what paper. You subsequently learned. Who he is, though, huh? Yeah, a lot of them I, I learned since, and a lot of them I haven't. Okay, how about Zachary Knight, that person? How did that develop? <laughs> Zachary Knight developed about the same time as uh, Mark. He was one of the controllers and stuff, and he developed through sexual abuse, and he decided he couldn't handle it too much, but he was also the one that dabbled into Satanism. So. Okay, who's he? Professionally. Who? Oh. Zachary Knight. I don't even know. I mean, the last name, I've been trying to figure out where that's come from for a long time. Okay, who else did he get the introduction to? Uh, that's nobody. Uh, What's that he, chart you're looking at there? This is a chart of the guys who abuse me and stuff. It just has their names, uh, approximate sexual activity with each person, with, with that person, the year I met them, or you know about that time and stuff. Okay, we look from what town they're from, and then involved with what group of people, like if they're involved with Nambler or Carlson or Bear. Or, okay, we can go over that chart know. too then later on, huh? Yeah. Okay. And he introduced me to. Through Zachary, I got involved with like Emilio and stuff. And Emilio, you want to explain who Emilio is? Emilio is the guy who uh, abducted, not, abducted Johnny Gosh and kidnapped kids for a living. That's I've come to learn was his occupation, I guess. Okay, who else did you introduce you to? I don't really know. There's just a lot of people introduced me to. You didn't know their names, in other words. Well, yeah, I know their names, but all personalities are involved with a lot of the same people, so. Well, I see. So there's overlap. Uh, how about Christian uh, Benassi? Uh, 